Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Kent with another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? I came to talk to some people who feel like the decks are stacked against them. It seems like as soon as you stand on your feet, boom, something come along and knock you back down. I mean, it feels like life has its foot on your throat and you are about ready to tap out. Well, I came to encourage you. Don't tap out. This ain't the time to give up, baby. Listen, I got a word I want to talk to you about and I'm going to title this one, Don't Throw in the Towel. Let's go. Yeah, man. Man of wisdom, man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast, from the pulpit to the podcast, to the podcast. Yeah. Jesse Canty. Pursuing my destiny. Pursuing my Hey, welcome to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It? This is episode number 116. I have a lot to say, so let's don't play and get into this thing, man. Father, in the name of Jesus, use me, God. I pray that you guide me. God, help me say what you want me to say. Don't say what I don't need to say. You, I pray that you encourage the listener, God. Have your way. Draw them to you. Give them, let them get their faith be strengthened in you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Yes, my title, my title is Don't Throw in the Towel. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of How Bad Do You Want It, man. Listen here, I want to jump right into this thing. Fear, in this day and age we in now, man, fear is something that will disable you. It will mess with your emotions. It can hinder a person and stop them from doing the things they want to do or they need to do. And every time we turn around right now, we have plenty reasons to fear if we got our eyes off God. It's so much that people that are listening to me right now, it is so much that life has thrown at you. I'm talking about from unexpected deaths and disheartening moments in life and even bad uh, people struggling. I'm talking to entrepreneurs who struggling. I'm talking to entrepreneurs, people who trying to get it off the ground and it seems like you can't get it off the ground. I'm talking to people who dealing with real life issues. As I said in my intro, man, it seems like every time you go to try to stand on your feet, something comes along and knocks you back down. Down. Man, let me tell you, I know that feeling. In fact, before I came into the studio, I just had to sit there and take a moment and just listen to God and even think and look back, not only back over my life, but even look back over the last few weeks. It seemed like one minute you get excited and you have faith and then something comes along to snatch that faith. I don't think I'm the only one that feels this way and have been experiencing this thing, <clears throat> that it just seems like the enemy is working overtime and not only the enemy, I don't want to give Satan all his credit here, but even life itself, it feels like the deck is stacked against you. It feels like the cars that have been dealt to you. We're going to be real on this episode now. It feels like the cars that have been dealt to you uh, uh, are unfair or uh, unwinnable. <laughs> you can't win with the hand that been placed in you, uh, in your hand, and the cards have been placed in your hands. But I'm telling you, not only the devil is a liar, but God is the truth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And all of these things that come along, if you forget that and you get your eyes off God, it makes you want to feel like you are outnumbered. Why even try? We look around and I don't know why we as believers think death is uh, uh, is defeat. And I'm not trying to come along and say, hey, wish death upon nobody. But if those who in Christ die, that is not defeat. Immediately they're in the presence of the Lord. But when I say that, when I, the reason why I say that, I say this right here, because death tend to make you feel like giving up 
It tend to make us feel like, you know what? I've been trying to get this thing out of the mud. I've been trying to do this here. I've been working hard. I've been highlighting scriptures. I've been quoting scriptures. <clears throat> I've been praying. I've been believing. And it's still not coming together. And it makes you want to give up and throw in the towel. But you can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. In the words of Lee Williams, who just passed away, God rest his soul, you have come too far and you can't give up now. If you was going to give up, my friend, you should have gave up years ago. If you was going to give up, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you know, let's tell the truth, just me and you talking. God have brought you through too many storms, through too many snares, traps, through too many experiences in life. And why would you give up now? Because you don't, things are not, oh, I'm talking to somebody. Things are not coming together like you expected them to be. So therefore, you tend to think you're getting ready. You think God is not moving in your behalf. But I feel an utterance from the Holy Spirit that's not telling you God is getting ready to move, but is specifically telling you, specifically telling you that God is already moving. In other words, if I was in the fight game, I'm here to tell you what the Lord is saying, that not only you can't throw in the towel and keep fighting, but God says the fight is fixed and victory is yours. But you will not get victory if you throw in the towel, a.k.a. if you quit, a.k.a. if you give in. You cannot check out and let your faith just dip out and, and stop doing what God told you to do and stop living and stop believing and stop progressing and stop trying and stop hoping and stop expecting. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Because someone left you doesn't mean you got to stop progressing. And I mean left you in all types of various ways. You does not, you, your life is not destined to end where somebody else has stopped. Your faith must go on a little further. Do you remember when Jesus was in the garden, was in the garden of Gethsemane? He came back to the three that was with him. He says, why can he say, can you not watch with me? He says, in fact, watch and pray. And he came back and found them asleep. There are some people that you have counted on that you have depended on and either they left you in life or either they left you in life. You get what I'm saying. Either, either they left you by, by dying or either they left you by living and then just walked away from you. But Jesus went on a little further. You got to keep going a little further when the odds are stacked against you my friend that shows you what now it's time to show the enemy what you're working with see some of us ain't got nothing in the tank you ain't got enough strength you ain't got enough determined determination you ain't got enough resilience you ain't got enough fortitude you ain't got enough faith you ain't got enough of a trust in god you ain't got how bad do you want it it will be tested. And I'm not talking just about material things. I'm talking about pursuing your destiny. I'm talking about seeing what God have promised in your life manifest before your eyes because you got an assignment. You're not chasing things, but your destiny. You want to chase your destiny. So when you stand before God, he'll say, well done. If he put a business in your hand and I don't care in all business, be honest. I don't want to see him get nobody set up on something. There are some journeys that you map out that you navigate your way of going <clears throat> that you see going a certain way. And there are what is called detours. Life will throw you detours. What if you drove 500 miles to a 10 for to a thousand mile journey and you get 500 miles halfway there and the road that you mapped out, you saw yourself going a certain way and all of a sudden you got an unexpected detour that have popped up out of nowhere. And would you turn around and quit then? I'm going to say it again in the words of Lee Williams. And the reason why I'm saying this song, because I came in the hospital room where my dad was. I seen my dad go through the heart surgery and the other types of surgery. And it came to me to start playing Lee Williams' song that he loves so much when he's riding that motorcycle. I come too far to give up now. He says, I can't give up now. You have came over 500 miles. And now you're going to tell me that you're getting ready to give up? 
You're going to just turn around, throw your hands up and go back home. I'm going to say it again. You can't throw in the towel. There's a saying that says, uh, 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 I tried to throw in the towel, which means I tried to quit. But God threw it back at me and said, wipe your face with it because you're almost there. Another saying says it like this. Never throw in the towel. Use it to wipe off the sweat and then keep on going. <clears throat> you may be crying. You may be feeling like you that you, you can't win, but never allow yourself. Now, let me give you some substance here. Never allow yourself to get to a place where you, you're starting to, to uh, have doubt. You're starting to give up on God and you're starting to give up on your dreams. I believe that God is still with you. Not only that, though it may look like you have been walked through or walked to or led to a dead end, really you have been set up for a miracle. In the fight terminology, it means the fight has been fixed. That means God has went ahead of you and already determined your outcome. All you got to, if the fight is fixed, you're in the first round about ready to give up. You took a nasty blow to your eye in the second round. In case you don't mean know what that means. That means your vision have taken a hit. <clears throat> that means now you're not even seeing clearly as you entered the fight. You got hit so hard. Now you don't know whether you're coming or going, but you're still on your feet. <laughs> my God, I don't know who that's for. Somebody ought to say, I'm still on my feet. <laughs> I may be spinning. My head may be spinning. My knees may be shaking and my legs may be wobbling. I may be struggling to make payroll. I may be struggling just to pay my house rent. I may be struggling just to stand, but I'm still on my feet. I'm still on my feet. Listen here, as long as you stand on your feet. Sometimes when a boxer get hit unexpectedly and he has a perfect record and he get hit unexpectedly and you feel like you're getting ready to go down, what you got to do is hold on to the rope. You got to hold on and clinch or do whatever you got to do. Make it out of that round. Let me tell you, don't you curse your day. You're going to make it past this round. Just stand on your feet and hold on in this second round because God, little do you know, God has the fight fixed and you're going to knock that joker out. You're going to knock it out of the park. You're going to win in the fifth round. So you can't give up in the second round. 1 John 5, 4 says, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And that's enough right there. If I don't read another scripture, if you digest this one, that should be enough ammunition to put inside of your walk and cause you to uh, 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 trust in God and be strengthened in God like never before. For whatsoever is born of God. First of all, are you born again? And if you're not, man, let me tell you something. You need to confess your sins, receive Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Give your life to him. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit so you can be born again. Then you can go back and read 1 John 5, 4 and say, I'm born of God. And what he said to me, I will overcome this world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God? That means, listen here, it ain't nothing, and I emphasize nothing, that this world can throw at the believer that calls us to be defeated. Even the worst, what is the worst thing that this world can throw at you? And it's death. Do you hear what I'm saying? It ain't eviction. It ain't cancer. It ain't COVID-19. What is the worst thing that this world can throw at you? And it is death. And what did your Bible say about it? It said that Jesus removed the sting of death. That means even if the world delivered its worst blow, but the Bible says to live is Christ and to die is gain. I came to decree the word of God that you are victorious. And I don't just mean when you're dying, but as long as I'm alive, I'm going to stand up in the faith that God have given me. And I am victorious. Victory belongs to the most persevering. 
That's what Napoleon Bonaparte said. If you are persevering, if you are able to get past and press past the hardest moments and most difficult moments in your life, let me tell you, victory belongs to you. If you can't beat the thing that's coming at you, if you can't get rid of the thing that's coming at you, then outlive it, outlast it. Stand on your feet and don't allow anything to cause you to quit before your victory comes. Because your victory comes from finding opportunity in your problem. That's Sun Tzu said that. When you can look at the problems instead of saying, I'm going to get rid of these problems. That's the problem. We don't want to go through anything. We don't want any problems. We don't. We, we, want, to, we want the muscles without the weight. Come on now. We want the victory without the without the uh, the problems, without the challenges. There we go. We want the victory without the challenges. What is victory if you don't have a challenge? Why would you raise your hand and say, yes, I'm number one, if it was easy and anybody could do it? What gives you pride of winning is that you know you took a lick and then kept it and keep on, kept on ticking. What gives you pride of lifting your hands up and say, yes, I endured. The word endure would not even, it would become obsolete, unnecessary if you didn't have to go through nothing. So instead of seeing that your problems are just your problems, your problems are opportunities for your victory. It comes from it when you find the opportunity in your problem. So when you got problem, look at this thing, examine it with different glasses. Stop listening to people who who, who speak in nothing but defeat. Mute them jokers, get around, get away from them, put you some spiritual headphones on them, on you and, and ignore what they say. Let's look at your, I'm doing it right now in my mind. I got some problems before me right now, Jack. And I'm looking at those things instead of woe is me. I'm starting to see, wait a minute. What is it that God can not only bring out of that, this problem, but bring out of me in this problem so that my victory, oh, how did I say it? Um, Victory is not just external, but it is internal. Not only God going to cause me to win on the outside, but he's more focusing on me winning on the inside. What is it that God can build in me? What void? in me that God have allowed to happen that he desires to plug up or fill up with him or some character that flows from him that I needed inside of me. These problems are, or have arisen to test and to bring you opportunity to grow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Pain is the only temporary is pain is only temporary, but you got to remember that victory is forever. Don't nobody walking around saying, here are 44 year olds, such and such, who is an entrepreneur, da da da. When they introduce him, he caused his mother pain for nine months. He was struggling to come out in the room, in the, in the operating room. They had to labor for two and a half hours, but today he have built the skyscraper, but today he have built them to a successful business. Let me tell you something. The victory that you experience. Is going to be overshadow. Excuse me. The victory that you experience is going to always overshadow the pain that you suffered and had endure. Pain is temporary, but man, but your mindset make you think what you're going through. We tend to overemphasize what we're going through and how we feel about it. Every prayer is, hey, my friend, I'm quitting, I'm feeling, and I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm talking to my chef too, man, but I'm telling you something here that we got to focus on the victory that's going to come that you're going to live in forever. The greatest victory is not winning against people, but it's against, it's winning against yourself. That's the biggest struggle. My biggest fighting in, I'm going to say this, they're going to mess some church folks up. And this is so true, man. Ooh, I wish I had an eyewitness thing. My biggest fight, my big, if emphasize what I said, my biggest underscore fight is not against Satan. My biggest fight is against me. Oh, God, I hear him talking to me. Watch this. <laughs> Satan don't talk to me more than I talk to me. Ah, I disagree. And you got every right to disagree, and I got every right to be right. 
<laughs> Satan don't. Oh God, he have to say this. Satan doesn't discourage me more than I discourage me. Sometimes we beat Satan to the punch. We wake up and in the midst of praying, Father, I believe that you're gonna you're gonna bless us. You're gonna you're gonna show me the way out. Da da da. da. And Amen. And the minute we get a call behind that, or the minute we face a situation, we start talking the opposite of what we just said to God. Satan ain't even came and knocked on the door of opportunity to defeat you yet, and you've already defeated yourself. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. I want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at jessecantypodcast at yahoo.com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. We don't believe sometime. We don't believe in the God that's inside of us. We don't believe what his word says. We're always thinking about giving up. We're always thinking about, we're always feeling like we are alone because we are walking by faith. Look not at the things that are seen because the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. That means that the God that's walking with you is not able to be seen by your by your natural eyes. I don't care how much you've been fasting. You can't see God with your eyeballs and your glasses. You got to see God by your faith. So therefore, 95% of the time, it feels like you are alone. And when you feel like you're alone, you feel like giving up. But instead of giving up, that's the time you need to fire up. You got something ahead of you that God is getting ready to walk you into that will begin to manifest the faith, excuse me, manifest the vision that he has shown you and that you've been fighting for. There is a prophetic word being utterance that I'm telling you that your fight is fixed. And it makes no difference what you going through. Not only you coming out, but you're coming out as a winner. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me give you some scripture here. Galatians 6, 9 said, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. You're going to reap everything that you have been planning, that you have been believing, but you cannot give up. Let me give you the word now. I'm going to give you substance here. Philippians 4.13, you know what it says, man. It says, I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. I love scriptures. Anybody who's been listening to my podcast for a long time, if you get to know me, I really wish I had the time. I believe in slow-talking scriptures. In other words, I can do. Pause. Let that sit there for a minute and say, wait a minute, God. Why I didn't say you can do all things by you strengthening me? That's not what the word says. He already know what he can do. God is trying to get you to know what you can do. That's the problem. Some of us got more, oh, listen to me. Some of us got more faith in God and no faith in us. I didn't say don't have faith in God. Don't twist my words. Be intelligent now. I said some of us got all the faith in God and no faith in us. God says I can do. He says this to the apostle. He wants you to know that you are able. You are the right. I am the right one for the job. I think before my brother passed away, he encouraged me. God gave him some. I was going through ministry. I had just started ministry. I was going through a lot of stuff. I felt like people expectation upon me was too much and the ministry started growing and everything. And I felt like I was, I was outnumbered. I said, I don't know if I'm able to do that. Junior told me, he said, you are the man for the job. You have been chosen by God. I don't know who I'm talking to in your ear, but I came to tell you, you can't quit now. You have been chosen by God. And listen here, get out of that temper tantrum. Get out of that thinking, that funky place that's telling you to give up. You don't supposed to live there. Get your mind back on top and start to look in the mirror and say, wait a minute. I am the right one for the job. I can take a licking and keep on ticking. I can do 
all things, whatever life throw at me, whatever hurdle that God allows to be put in front of me, it's not unfair. Quit saying it's unfair. That's the problem. Why? Why you ever seen in the basketball? Player, ain't gonna call about the name. You ever seen in the basketball players that they can't even play because they complaining so much? You make a shot and get fouled. You run over there to the referee and get that foul. Why you complaining about something ain't fair? They done went down to the other end of the court and scored again. Quit. Going to God and fasting and, and complaining about what he is and tighten up them gloves and throw that right, throw that left, throw that jab, duck that thing with the enemy throwing at you. Dance around, get your praise on, get your victory, and you're going to mess around and slip that devil with an uppercut. You're going to win it before it's over with. This thing ain't going the distance. This fight is fixed. All you got to do is keep your eyes focused, Peter. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Jeremiah 29, 11. So I know the plans that I have for you. He says, declares the Lord. He says, plans for welfare, for good and not evil. I came to give you a future and a hope. I came to stretch and build up and empower your expectation, Jack. We <laughs> get good to when you're talking like that, man. God says, listen here, man. I came to give you hope. In the words of the politician, you got to keep hope alive. The enemy tried to kill your hope. <sighs> Philippians 1 and 6, for I am sure that, that he who had begun a good work inside of Jesse, God is going to bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Not only am I going to win in the end, but I'm going to win during. I'm going to win in the meanwhile. I'm going to win in the meantime. I decree right now that everything, yeah, it is some things. You know, a boxer, a boxer can go out in one round and do something that he was not taught to do and do something that he was not trained to do. He went through training camp. He went through all this time. He knew he, he wasn't supposed to be leading with that hand, but he got out there and messed up that round, got whipped up in that round, eyes swollen, vision messed up, about ready to quit, want to throw in the towel. Who wants to throw in the towel so I can quit? And when you throw in the towel in the boxing match, that means the fight is over with. But then you go back to the corner and the corner talks some sense in you and remind you of what you was taught and what you was trained in training camp and said, don't you go back out there and leave with that again. Don't you go back out there and do that mistake again. Go back in the next round, correct that thing and you still can win the match. So what if you sin? So what if you've backslid? So I don't know. I'm not minimizing any of this now. So what if you made a mistake in life? Let me tell you what they may not be telling you. You have made a mistake, but you still did not lose the whole fight. You may have lost the round. Go back. Listen to your trainer. Go back. Listen to God's word and correct in the next round what you messed up in the previous round. And he said he'll bring it to completion. Second Chronicles says, but you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak for the work shall be rewarded. I got to speed this thing up. That's second Chron Chronicles 15, seven, Joshua one and nine, my favorite, one of my favorite old Testament scripture. And God <laughs> says, this, have not, I commanded you have not, didn't I not tell you <laughs> be strong and courageous, not only be strong, but act bold, man. Believe that you are a winner. Quit talking this crazy talk. Don't you get off this podcast talking crazy no more. I'm going to punch you in your eye. You come talking crazy. He said, be strong and courageous. Everybody going through. You ain't the only one. But everybody ain't coming out because some people are throwing in the towel. But I'm telling you, you're not going to throw in the towel. Every time you think about quitting, God going to remind you of who you are and who you were created to be. And not only that, but he's going to remind you of who he is and what he said about you. The Bible says, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God, he is with you wherever you go. Isaiah 41 10 talks about mountain up. No, this is one talking about fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am the Lord your God. I will strengthen you. I help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things were, and we know, I mean, I don't want to quote, let me read it. And we know that those who love God, all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Purpose. James 1, 12 says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Can you, Kate, can you remain steadfast under your trial? For when he has stood the test, he shall receive the crown of life 
which God has promised to those who love him. You got to withstand the test. And then the last thing I'm going to say, George Foreman said, sure, yeah, the fight was fixed. I fixed it with my right hand. What do they have to do with you? God's word says in Psalms 98, he says, oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The fight has been fixed with the right hand of God. He's going to knock out all of the enemies that have been trying to knock you out. He has fixed it already. All you got to do, believe. All you got to do is believe and trust in God. I believe in you and I believe in the God that's in you. And I came to tell you in my last word that don't you throw in the towel. You can't give up now. I love you. I'll see you on the flip side. Be blessed. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty and the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.